Southern. When I would say Southern. some words, they, the kids would look at me like, mm. what? Yeah. They didn't know what I was talking about. No, so. but, but I feel so close to them because their culture is very similar to Cuban. They are more relaxed. They laugh a lot. And, <laughs> and, and, and I mean, I, I like teaching there very, very much. But it's, sometimes it's hard for them to understand me and for me to understand them. But what happened? We have the personality uh, bridge. The connection. So, and you know that for communication, that's the most important thing. You may not be an English or uh, taught by, um, I don't know, the, the best of the best, but if you are willing to, to communicate, you communicate. And that was one of the first, I, I would say, the only thing that I, it was very hard for me when I started in, in Fisher. I was blessed because I was in a wonderful group of people that were speech pathologists. And they helped me a lot. But when I came here in this building, because they simply, I don't understand. Come on, you're not even trying to, to hear, not to understand. And that was, but I am so patient and I'm, I'm so old, I have, <laughs> so I don't care. I repeat and repeat and repeat. and. Uh, and I guess I I I, uh, so I was you, able to make it. When you when you I, I don't know if there's anybody here from student services. I guess yes uh, yes. Oh okay we okay. Are. Um, uh, what what is it like when you have someone call in or somebody wants information or whatever about our programs and everything, and you just really cannot understand them, you really cannot, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it, maybe it's you, maybe it's somebody next to you. Um, uh, how are those, because I heard Sylvia say earlier, you know, uh, be, um, what's the word she is, uh, develop the human touch. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, how difficult is that to develop that human touch with somebody to if you're just really struggling to try to understand what's going on? That's what we need to train. We need to train that the person has to say, oh, I'm sorry, my phone is having some issues. Let me change and try to find someone else. But we, do not, we should not tell that person I don't understand what yeah. you're saying because that's a, yeah. a wall, a huge wall between whoever is calling. Does that happen, yeah, I mean, guys? Like sometimes it has happened to me that a student calls me, sometimes, like for example, with a career that the connection is really bad, with the students from Jamaica, and you tell them, oh, do you mind if you send me an email because... Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Usually I tell them, like, do you mind sending me an email uh, because the connection is a little bit bad? Oh. Sometimes when, you know, I don't understand them. Because, yes. You know, the might need And then you send me an email, and they don't take it bad, or with a student in Asia. And actually, the connection is really bad because it's like... <laughs> <laughs> like that, so... And they don't feel offended or anything like that, so... Okay, might want to investigate the same thing. simultaneous tra um, translation too. Mm -hmm. like okay, we translate. are running a little yeah, late, so and I'm sorry for Vanaja. She is about to put her pajama. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the next slide was about um, okay. The high calling to teach and serve student requires a genuine interest in who they are as people. The same thing happens to you when you go to the doctor. You want the doctor not to see a client. Oh, this is my patient. How are you doing? How's your family? So acknowledge that there's someone who is a human being, as well as their lived experiences. So um, that that's a winning card. Thank you. Okay. So what we have researched um, from the literature, we have. Uh, uh, identified or the, the literature has identified uh, certain or several um, challenges for, for students. So fear, distress, uh, they don't know uh, it, it's a doctoral program, it's costing me a lot of money, what is going to happen, and then if they don't find a human being on the other side, they, they feel it even more uh, I don't know where to go. If you add to that, that for the first time they have to write a 10 pages uh, paper, and they have to go online, and then in the middle of the illumination session, 
the connection is gone, and the microphone doesn't work. So they are as challenged as, as a one-year-old baby, and they feel the same way. The difference is that they don't know, the, I mean, they can't cry because no one is going to listen. No, no, no one is going to pamper them. Guess what? We are the one who has to pamper them. And we don't have to pamper them that by giving them an A at the end. And that's it. No, we have to make them know that I'm, we are there for them. And they cannot call me at 10 in, in the evening or 1 in, in the morning, but they have to know, they need to know that I'm there really for them. And if they have a question, if they have a problem, if the daughter is, is sick and they are child, they, they, they have to call me and they know that I'm going to answer and I'm going to give them a and I'm not unique. So everyone here has to do that if we want to bring more students. Um, and not need to suspend a party because we don't have money. Or, or um, a retreat because we don't have money. Okay. So the other, um, well, adapting to the online environment, I believe I mentioned that educational system differences. So it's totally different for our students in Jamaica of the system <coughs> here, the grading, uh, the matrix. Uh, everything is different. Uh, the plagiarism uh, thing, the uh, a student's handbook, because not in all, in all the countries, and I'm talking Jamaica because Jamaica is very close to me. I've been teaching there for the last two years or so. Uh, in Venetia area, most of them are Americans or Canadians, and the, the system is, is similar. But the ones who are from Australia is totally different. So that's an adaptation and a fear and a challenge for, for those students. Uh, my friend? The next one? Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay, another thing is that students tend to rely a lot on their instructors. And not only on their instructors, but from my experience, from their advisors' uh, experience, I can say that they tend to uh, share with you a lot of their information, like what Sylvia was saying about their family. They, they tend to tell you a lot, of, like for example, one of my students, they tell me, oh, guess what, I have good news, I just passed my concept paper. Or, you know, right now my, my daughter is sick in the hospital, so can you help me pay my balance at the bursar's office? And I'm like, okay, look, that is a little bit out of my <laughs> jurisdiction. <laughs> However, you know, yeah, because sometimes they see you as a one-stop shop. However, you know, you, you need to tell them, okay, this is out of my jurisdiction, but, you know, you still have time to do this. Or, you know, one gentle touch as this thing where you tell them, okay, look, this is our major jurisdiction. however, you still have time to do it, or, you know, this is how you do it, let me guide you through this, or another thing that I try to do with my students is tell them, hey, nice to hear from you, how are you doing, how's your daughter doing, I hope she's doing better, look, everything is going to be fine, or when they tell me and they share, hey, I passed my dissertation, hey, good for you now, continue working hard because, you know, your proposal is the next step, you know, just give them that word of, you know, support and everything, and they really like it, and then they share it with the other students, and word of mouth is the best thing that we can, you know, do To support what Georgina just said, excuse me, um, also, you have heard this hundred of times, uh, I got an A. The teacher gave me a B. So it's not that we gave them the E, uh, the, the, the B and the A. No, if it is A, they gain it. They achieve it. But if it's a B, it's you. So they usually rely, it's, if, I, if I fail, it's because of the professor. If I fail, it's because of, of the teacher, not because of me. So we have to be very careful to let them know, I'm doing my best, but you have to do your part. Because this type of marriage, if you don't do your part, uh, I already graduated and I have my diploma hanging 
behind the door because I didn't never hang it. <laughs> so, but uh, that that's 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 crucial. That's essential. Uh, and actually, in a study where we pulled out all this information, 89% of the respondents were like contingent upon the perceptions from their from the well, from their instructors. So it's like a high number of respondents that are you know relying on the success of the instructors. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing, the negative perceptions, the same thing. You know, a lot of the students, you know, are what he was saying that you know they rely on they they don't know. If the professors also think that, oh, well, the student doesn't know English, so you know they give them a bad grade, or another aspect that they think is the plagiarism. So those are factors also that are, that you know, are negative towards the students. You know, that's another challenge that a lot of the international students are. And that is something that I realize too, is the customs around plagiarism vary from place to place. And we need mm -hmm. to be very clear about what our policies are yeah, with international students. Because they're not very familiar with that. They think that just... In many countries, it's not even an issue. No, no it's, it's not, not an so. issue. In, in China, yeah. that's not an issue. We are honoring this person by using his thoughts. Mm -hmm. But, well, that's uh, yeah, a very that's thin line between. Though. But mm -hmm. what Georgina is saying, um, <clears throat> Sometimes, um, and, and I have this experience in Barnajas group and also in Jamaica, but in, in Bangkok it's even stronger. I cannot tell a Chinese student, why are you late? You cannot be late every, every class. I can't. Hmm. Not, not in any way, because she's going to feel so threatened that perhaps she drops the, the course. So we need to know who we are talking to. Is, I mean, at one point, students are all our kids. And we need to, to know how to treat each of our kids. So you have to be careful how you approach them, how you compare them. Uh, even you have to, uh, I mean, not uh, highlight the um, uh, advantages of one student or how good his uh, paper was. And so it's, uh, they are the same. So we cannot uh, reflect or project any, uh, in any way, any feeling, uh, anything that can uh, raise that feeling of inferiority of negative perception. Sounds like we need more diversity training workshops. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Michelle, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a question though, Sylvia. So sure. um, the field associates that they have for the international cohorts, are they the same ones as, is it the same field associate for every cohort? In Asia, yes. It's, a, it's Dr. Nelly. Oh, okay, so she's the field assistant. That's why yes. she's here, because we love her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then when they, when they join the online uh, programs, when they join the online portion of the program, they, they, they start, who, who's their field associate? She, she still oversees oh, them. Okay. Okay. Well, just, just Asia is different. Asia has um, Dr. Nelly, who is a full-time MSU employee, yeah. who's, a, who's a liaison for Asia. Mm -hmm. So that's... And she, in her duties, are incorporated field associate duties. So that's full time. However, when you move over to the Caribbean, you have field associates who are assigned to the students for two years. And then that's it. They, that's move, it. On After the, that, they move on to the DEC. Mm -hmm. So the, the, and when I say that's it, that's where their, their salaries end after two years. And that's, but, the, uh, that, that's the same thing in America, in all the cohorts. After the second missing, year, most students do not end the program after two years. Mm -hmm. However, they have taken the students completely away from the field associates, salary-wise anyways, and put them in the hands of the DEC who are working with many other students, many other countries, and the DECs differ. I have Georgina, so I don't have a problem. But, <laughs> I'm happy but, but um, it, is, it is at that point, sometimes the field associates don't even know when they're, they've completed the program. And these are the people who have started with them. 
So it is, it is, yeah. it is, there is some disconnect, there's some cut off point before they graduate. So and two that minutes. is, that two is, two minutes. So <laughs> that, that, it, um, as a problem. With mine, okay. that's a little different. So, so the last one was a student, uh, teacher Dana Dynamics, okay. and we have discussed that. So, uh, Vanaja, please. Okay, um, these are um, discussion of uh, what are some of the challenges that are faced by both uh, students as well as faculty who are dealing with uh, international students. Can we go to the next slide? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, I mentioned uh, diversity training. So. Basically, what diversity training, I'm sure there is already such training going on, on, on uh, at the university, but basically what we need to do is to bring about an awareness such that both the faculty who are teaching as well as the staff who are dealing with international students are aware of uh, diversity issues. And what you see on this slide is actually some ideas that um, um, Sylvia so and the team has put forward as to what you need to take into account should we come up with diversity training. And these are some of the skills that you would need to come uh, to bring up. And I have a few more, what's on the screen you can read. What I would like to add to that list is some of the diversity issues or the diversity skills that we all need is experience being the other or being different. Someone uh, had the example just now of an uh, international student calling the university and you being unable to understand what's on, coming from the other side. Now just imagine that's probably what some students feel when they call us, call you in the US. Right? Because uh, we all have our own accent for, for the language. We all, think, we all speak English, but with our own individual accent. So the same difficulty is probably faced by the student who calls the university. So maybe part of one aspect of diversity training could be to actually experience being the other or being different. Yeah. Another experience that is so crucial for us is uh, stereotyping. Some, you know how sometimes for some of us, when you see a Chinese student, you actually cannot differentiate it from him or her from another Chinese student, or, or people look just the same for us, just because we think they belong to a different um, racial group or a different country. So what does it feel like being in a, in a setting like that? And then the, the other thing that uh, also maybe should come into uh, when we consider diversity training would be to be open to the idea that there could be more than one way to do something or to perceive something. Right? And that's where the cognitive skills that was mentioned just now, um, how we uh, perceive a problem when you have a problem solving uh, exercise or how group work takes place like doing group work is very much an american way or a western way of learning the eastern way for example in japan and china would be a different way so those are the kinds of things that we need to realize as as faculty who go to teach in international setting uh, another one would be to maybe uh, make connections and share life experiences. So we gave a, a, quite a few examples of that. And uh, the final one that I'd like to mention here is, uh, again, English language proficiency and how a lower English language proficiency does not really equate with uh, a less able student. So uh, these are developing some of the diversity skills that would be useful for all of us who deal with national students, whether you're faculty, whether you're chair, whether you're staff. And um, of course, the final um, uh, uh, conclusion or the final uh, point that we'd like to leave you with is if we could uh, encourage this kind of inclusiveness, 
uh, then it would probably lead to um, less to international students feeling that uh, they have a sense of alienation. Thank you, thank you, Bambi. Yes. I believe that we answered the questions. Uh, Okay, so anyway, uh, because we, we don't have time, uh, I recommend you to go to the, um, go online, you can go to YouTube. There's um, um, an address or remarks from Kerry about um, our uh, secretary, um, about the International Week. And I, I listened to that on Monday, on, and I was very impressed because he refers to everything that we have uh -huh. prepared before. So yeah, it yeah. was like, it's and very smart guys. so please, very smart. Uh, it's, it's only three minutes, so do that and you will be glad that you did. Thank you very much. You Thank know. you again. Thank you. Thank you. information. This begs us yes. getting together yes. again yes. and exploring. I think the seeds were planted and we need to pick it up from here and start to move this forward. I'm sitting there saying to myself, yes, please help yourself to the cookies. I know Sylvia wants you to do that. Um, uh, um, um, uh, saying to myself, saying to myself, even the folks who are not here, as she mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, the number of adjuncts we have. And I'm saying, who's telling them? Who's, 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 who's bringing them up to speed? You know, I think we got a huge job here to do, and and if we did, and if we did it with finesse and, and 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 an organized approach to it, and to follow through and everything, I think we would see a much better improvement of what we do here. And as as Michelle said a, a, a few minutes ago. Yes, it had this whole international flavor today, and yes, we're zeroing in on it, but a lot of what we're talking about applies right here to domestic, to us right here. Yes, so thank you all so very much. Look for us to follow up on this. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you know, I see you have to stay more.